It's a blessed time. Today is Tuesday, the 14th of uh, April 2020. Welcome to this morning special broadcast. We have some blessed things in store for you this morning. And by, uh, by a surprise, we, we are continuing from yesterday. I just had a leading that we continue with the messages. We started teaching on us yesterday. Deliverance from my, my, my father's house. Okay, the message was start on. So I would like to encourage you this morning, uh, wherever you are viewing us, so we'd like you to, uh, to come out, invite someone, uh, share, also start a watch party. Please do have it. Share the video. Reach out to someone. Share to as many persons as possible. We would need you to come over. We're about to move into prayer. This is the way we always begin. It begins with this sound. And then we go into prayer this morning. Promises to be good and great this morning. And we trust that you are going to be blessed. We welcome all of you. Our regular... Uh, uh, viewers this morning I like to be the exact I mean I call everybody name but this morning I like to just you know reach out to someone here Brother Chester we are for Minnesota we, we like to welcome you this morning Sister Gaswa from Pennsylvania this morning I like to welcome you uh, my own daughter Jaru uh, Mema uh, uh, Chino Way this morning uh, 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 Pastor Shalom Goodrich this morning and some of you and then uh, 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 Pastor Benjamin Colley this morning uh, uh, Sister Della Hammond, uh, uh, Brother Stanley Logan, uh, uh, Brother uh, 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 James Pat, uh, uh, Jebo this morning, and Brother Alex Divine this morning. I'd like to welcome all of you this morning on this show, uh, wherever you call them from. Uh, and my own wife is a regular wa a viewer of this show. The mother, Reverend Mother Marlene Colley, is a regular worshiper. We welcome all of you, Samalene, this morning. We welcome. Uh, 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 Pastor Stevie Moba this morning, my cameraman. You know, we like that now. So, uh, Steve, you gotta be watching me now. I gotta be doing everything by myself. We wanna welcome you. We'll soon be going to prayer. And as I go, I'm gonna call a lot of names. So, don't think that I'm not forgetting. I know I, 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 a lot of you who could uh, I will show regular assist comfort. Uh, Davis this morning, the US. And uh, 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 just call me. I don't know. I know Richard Morris this morning, uh, Mercy Slocum. Uh, the, the list goes on this morning, and uh, we're going to get calling as you go along. We'd just like to mention you this morning because we know you follow us regularly, and we'll keep on reaching out. God bless you this morning as you prepare for prayer. I got it bear my knees. Yeah. Oh, yes. All heaven declare the glory of the raising Lord. So we're just begin inviting someone, calling someone to come online, that uh, the time of refreshing has started, and it's going to be good this morning. God bless you.
the way you always begin in the morning, yeah. Uh, it's always begin like that, yeah. Always begin. Always begin like that, yeah. Always like that. Yes. As the deer pants for water, my soul pants after you this morning. Yes, sir. The fall. The water so my soul. Long air. To thee. You alone are my heart. Desire and I long to worship you. I don't know where you long to worship him this morning. Yeah. I said it. Bountiful. The water so my son. to worship you. What a blessed day to be alive. Ah, April 14, 20, 20 this morning. 40 days of April. We go a few days into the lockdown. I want to let you know that God is still on the throne. And the God who has been good to us will keep us and take us through this challenge and this situation. We want to bless God for his goodness, his love and power. We pray for all our sons and daughters and members uh, and those who are linked with us in different ways. For those who are regular viewers, whether you are viewing from Moravia, Liberia, or from the counties, uh, Nimba County, Mosuada County, uh, Bombay County, Cape Mount, Lufa, uh, Bongman, uh, Grand Jida, Maryland, uh, Grand Cruz, Sino, Grand Bassa, uh, ba Bapolo, uh, yeah, River G. Whichever county you are viewing us from this morning, we like to say you are welcome. From West Africa, Senegal, Gambia, and uh, the African coast, Ghana, and Nigeria. Wherever you are following us from this morning. On the continent of Africa, the different nations of Africa. Uh, Europe, uh, Asia, yeah, uh, USA, the North America. Uh, we want to welcome you this morning. We'd like to welcome you from South America this morning. From Australia this morning, we'd like to welcome you. And we'd like to welcome you from Antarctica. From the seven continents of the world, we bless you to God this morning for you. That you can take the time and give us the honor of your presence to be able to reach out to you. We know the Lord who have started this good work and going to finish it. And we thank God so much that you could be here with us. We are here, you are there. To so God be the glory for great things he's done. You are my heart as I am. We're preparing for prayers. Very soon we're going to prayers. Yeah. I am a katala mosha kata. Sime ni mare makaya. Makia kasanaba. Abo ni makoshi. Sima ni moka kala bashanaba. Makia mosa. I get his body. You are uh, 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 to worship Just wash your hands. Keep a social distance. 
No touching. <laughs> yeah, talking as possible. Avoid putting your hands to sensitive part of your body, your eyes, your nose. When you know the matter, you haven't washed your hands. Avoid it. Stay away from the crowd. Do your best. Keep safe. Keep safe. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's the Lord is for it. Make my life whole again. Lord, make someone whole. Strength and encourage, build up. Everything to us. All that we are is because of you. 
all we've ever accomplished, all we've ever attained has been given because you have been there for us. You are proving yourself through the years and through the ages, through the times, that you are a God that can be trusted. You are a God that can be dependent upon. The word of God blesses the man who God is the God of Jacob. Well, thank you this morning. Now you are our God this morning. And as we gather on this line, more to be exact, in the past days we've been seeking you in prayer and fasting. Oh God, and today is a tightened day. Lord, on this line where we've been praying and trusting you for your intervention in our lives and our families, our nation, and keeping an atmosphere stable from every form of manipulation of the enemy, from any kind of chaos or whatever. We praise, bro, God. Thank you, God, for the grace you've given us to go through. We pray for keeping us in good health, for supplying our needs, supernatural provision, giving us the things we desire, giving us the things uh, we want, oh God. We thank you, Lord, for being everything to us. We look to you, the altar, the finisher of our faith. You are worthy, you are mighty, you are awesome, and you are powerful. Great is that faith when there's morning by morning. New mercies we see. While we have need of your hands are provided with. We look to you this morning and trust you this morning. And depend on you this morning and lean on you this morning. You are God all by yourself. Uh, you are king forever. Oh, we bless your name this morning. Amaye kashi abotaka. Makia narama kashi telebakato. Priyana lava shakata lava kata. Jakia kazakia mokatola bo. Prokata lava kashene. Makia kata. Zatola kata lava shane. Le kato lava kabayane. Le kasiya kata lava. This morning we confess our sins. We ask you to cleanse us, wash us by reason of the everlasting blood, the proclaimed blood of the Lamb. We thank you for watching our thoughts, our emotions, and everything about us. We submit to you. We draw strength and grace and might from your presence. We well, thank you that you, O oh God, are the one we can hope in and depend on. We thank you for taking your glory, O oh God, this morning. We trust you. We depend on you, and not for you. And not for you, God. Not for you. Every setup, we come against every projection, whatever you have not planted, 
we overthrow your brute, we destroy and dismantle, we scatter and we shatter, we nullify and cancer, we declare and decree today that your counsel shall not stand, their plans shall not come to pass, their workings shall not manifest in the name of Jesus. We thank you for showing us a strong, for showing us a mighty, for showing us a powerful. Shabaka Barabakata, Brea Narabaka Shikata, Branaraba, Rebaka Sata, Brea Naraba Shata, Jarabaka Sata, Rakia Katalaba, Masito, Zoko Talaba, Makia Baba 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 Jamele ba kutala ba kata, jabara ba kasiya, briya kasa taba, makora ba kashada, jara kata. Every conspiracy, every setup, everything to affect the lives of the people negatively, we destroy this morning. Every conspiracy against the Latin society, we destroy this morning. Every conspiracy against the nation, we destroy. It. Every conspiracy against this generation, we destroy every setup in cities and nations. Ah, Lord, I've been invented and raised up to afflict, to destroy, to depopulate. We destroy, we uncover, we subdue and notify the plans of evil, the workings of darkness. We scatter their gathering, we scatter their conspiracy. We declare and decree their counsel shall not stand, their work shall not stand. We show confusion in the midst of any chaos that is gathered against the well being of the people of God, against your purposes and plan. We subdue, we nullify, we cancel, we overthrow. Jama Kabara Makazi Yanaba. Rebaka Shikata Baba 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 Rabaka Shakarababa, Marabaka Shandaraba, Rabaka Sikataraba, Rabaku Shakataraba, Rabaka Shikarababa, Marabaka Taraba, Zamarimaka Shikaba, Yabaraka Sataka Shatakata, Zabarabaka Shakata, Zaborabaka Taraba, Zabari Katarabaka Shikataraba, Raka Sadaba. Somebody help me pray this morning. I thought you were praying where you are this morning. I thought you were lifting the voice uh, and interceding and asking God to show up and asking God to do something new and asking God to do something great and asking God to do something awesome. Jama kababa, makia baba baba, mara baba baba baba, jaba baba 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 Roka soko tora bakata, jabrika riba kasa katala ba, morika zaka tala ba kasa kata, jaka tora bakasa, makia kasa kata, makia kata. This morning is written. Whatever my father has not planted shall be uprooted. This morning, whatever God has not planted, whatever God has not planted in this nation, in our community, in our families, in our lives, we uproot this morning. We uproot by fire. We are brewed 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 by fire. We stay the plague. We stay the plague. We stay the manipulation. We stay the projection. We stay the spell. We steal the water of the evil one. We overturn by the blood. We overturn by fire. We overturn by your anointing. Oh yes, Lord, this morning.
any imposition, we block it. We ask you to overturn every conspiracy, overturn every plan, scatter every plan, destroy every plan. Let no stand, let no council stand. Let no council stand. Let your glory be there. Let your power be released. Let your anointing be poured out. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Let your power be poured. Let your glory be released. In the name of Jesus. Shaba kabara makoshika. Shaba raba koshia bakata. Maya bakabare makasiya nabara. Shaba raba koshika tana bakata. Shaba raba koshia nabara. Mama mara bakoshia nabara. Oh, we thank you this morning. We bless you this morning. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your strength. Thank you for your mind. Thank you for going ahead of us. Thank you for watching the world.
My brothers and sisters, wherever you are, those troubled, those in fear, those down, those broken, we ask you, Lord, to lift this spirit. We ask you to strengthen. I should have grant them grace. I should have grant them mercy. I should have protect, shield, sustain, supply, and fulfill your purpose in their lives. I cover your people in the blood of Jesus. And I ask you to take charge this morning, Lord. We draw strength from this day. We thank you for everything and everyone. We bless your spirit of truth. Bless you, mighty God, this morning. Our hearts are overwhelmed. Thank you for your glory. Thank you for your presence in our lives. Oh, we praise your name, Spirit of God. We worship you this morning. We ask you to take charge of this broadcast today. Bless your people and to gather from every walk of life to be a part of this time. May there be a true time of refreshing in your lives. May their strength be renewed. May your grace be imparted to them. We thank you this morning. Oh, we thank you this morning. I bless you, Jesus. Zabriya <laughs> Thank you this morning. Thank you this morning. Thank you this morning. Thank you this morning. You said, Behold the Shekhar, he says, Shana be by you. He said, Anyone that will rise up against us will fall for our sake. He said, No weapon that is formed against us shall prosper. He said, You are like a mighty terrible one. You say, Our vastness will not prevail. He said, Oh God, it will stumble, it will fall, it will be greatly ashamed. He said, The everlasting confusion will not be forgotten. Lord, this morning we thank you. We invoke the power of your grace. We invoke the power of your anointing. We invoke the power of your intervention this morning. In every fear, in every dimension. We say, oh God, move. Move in the name of Jesus. Let there be a manifestation, oh God. Let there be transformation. Let there be change. Let there be radical turnarounds. In the name of Jesus, show yourself strong. Manifest your glory, oh God. Let me be quick in the praying form in the name of Jesus. We first to show forth your glory. Thank you. 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 What can I bring to you, Lord? Of the song of praise, what can I do?
a short time of worship. I lift my voice and I hope you are lifting your voice wherever you are this morning. This I lift my voice. How I long to worship your holy name. I long to praise and adore you. You deserve the glory and your honor. You never change, you never fail, you never let me down. I won't let you God won't let you down this morning. How I love to worship your holy name. I love to praise and adore you. You deserve the glory. Because you are the awesome God. You are the awesome God this morning. Awesome God. Awesome God. My heart, my soul belongs to you. Yeah. I bow to you, my Savior and friend. Take all the glory. Take all the honor. So I can see that what you are saying. You cannot be explained, you cannot be understood. You are beyond comprehension. The songwriter said, you are beautiful beyond comprehension. Marvelous for words, wonderful. That's it. Who can search out your infinite wisdom? Who can fathom the depth of your love? This morning we appreciate you and bless you God for being in our midst. As we look into your word this morning. Thank you God for a wonderful day in your presence. Thank you Father. That's it. We bless the Lord this morning as we look at God's word. We'd like you to invite someone. Get someone telling them they need to come out. And hear the word of God this morning. Yeah. I told you we are continuing on the topic. Deliverance from the spirit of my house. Deliverance from the spirit of my house. Deliverance from the spirit of my house. Amen. Yesterday we started talking about this. And we were very intent on it. And this morning we're going to go into some deep prayer. So wherever you watch me for you need to follow along. Yesterday we took some scripture from the book of 2 Samuel chapter 3, 1 to 10. This morning we'll have to look at Judges chapter 6, 23 to 28. It's going to be one of our scriptures we're going to use today. As we study and talk on this topic, deliverance from the spirit of my house. Deliverance from the spirit of my house. I shared with you yesterday that uh, now let's go to the scriptures right and then we go into the message. Judges chapter 6, 23 to 28. Judges chapter 6. Judges chapter 6, 23 to 28. This is what it says in 23. And the Lord said to him, Peace be to you. Do not fear. You shall not die. Then give him bid an altar there to the Lord. And call it the Lord is peace. 
To this day, it still stands in opera, which belonged to the Bizarite. That night, the Lord said to Gideon, Take your father Bullock, the second bull, seven years old, and pull down the altar of Baal that your father has, and cut down the Asherah symbol of the goddess Asherah that is, that is beside it. And build an altar to the Lord your God on top of the stronghold with stones laid in proper order. Take the, then take the second bull and offer a burnt up sacrifice with the wood of the Asherah which you shall cut down. Then Gideon took ten men of his servants, did as the Lord had told him, but because he was too afraid of his father's household and the men of the city to do it by day, he did it by night. And when the men of the city arose early in the morning, behold, the altar of Baal was cast down, and that shadow was cut down that was beside it. And the second bullet was offered on the altar which had been built. Hallelujah. Now we're talking about deliverance from the spirit of my house. When I begin talking, discussing with you yesterday, I share with you that every house has a positive spirit and it has a negative spirit. And if you look at every house and every family and every household, you will notice that there is a pattern, there's a history that follows that family. In the history, there is a positive history and there is a negative history. And when you, if you want to correct anything in the present, you need to go into the past and check what the history is like. If there's anything happening in the present that is consistent and is, 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 is ongoing, you need to find out where did it come from? How did it enter? How did it start? It could be a perception. It could be certain way people do. It could be certain way people live. It could be a certain a tradition or culture people practice. You want to know what is the root of it. So if it's producing a positive result, you want to see what you can do to add to it, to improve it, for it to be for the results to be better. Also, if it's producing a negative result, you want to find out where is it coming from, how did it start, and what you can do to curtail it so that such evil or such negative uh, reaction or such negative, negative production does not continue. And it is the responsibility of every generation to do such a kind of evaluation for the progress and for the increase and elevation of the generation. Many a times people come to families and all they do is cast blames. And blame people and tell people why this person didn't do and what the other person didn't do. But I want to let you know that what the other people, what others didn't do, God has given you the responsibility to do it. You know, everyone that comes into this earth, you come here as a solution or an, an answer. Before you came, there were questions that were in your family, there were problems that were there. When God sent you to the earth, sent you to that family, sent you to that community, sent you to that nation. He sent you not to be a part of the problem. He sent you to be a part of the solution. And the sooner many of us in our life and in our generation can notice that, the better we'll be and the more impact we'll be able to make. Today what we found is that we have a lot of people who have the ability to sit down, talk about things, criticize, but cannot contribute anything that will bring about the change that we look forward to. And on most occasions, after they do all the talking and the criticism, of community leaders, of our family members, of our office uh, uh, managers, uh, 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 and going to even our national leaders, when you give them the opportunity to lead and to get to certain things, they do even worse than what the other people, the, the other people they criticize. And what was it? What is the what is responsibility? It's because the problem that exists is implanted in the in, in, in the lives of the people. It's implanted in several sectors. It's implanted in the mentality. It's implanted in the spiritual condition of that. That particular atmosphere is, is conditioned spiritually to produce that kind of result. It's planted in the character of the people. All right? So talking about it is not enough. It has to be uprooted from the character. It's also planted, and we're talking about character, but also the culture of the people. Then it's planted as a giant in the house of the, of, 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 of the people or in the nation. It becomes a giant. It becomes something that needs to be attacked and dealt with. And you see, when you have this thing implanted, it becomes difficult to make progress. That's why when you look around Africa, and you look around many nations, including our own Liberia, you will notice that there are things that people have been fighting for generations and no progress on it because the way at which it has been dealt with is not proper. Number one, too many things need to be done 
and we are not doing anything, we can use the fire brigade approach, and we can use propaganda, and we can use politics, and we can use everything together. It doesn't work that way. If anything must change, there are patterns to follow. Now, let me leave the nation and come to just individual families for a bit, for a bit. In your personal family. If the conditions surrounding your family will change, there are things that must be changed. First, you need to identify why are these things happening? Why is it occurring? Today, when you go to many churches, or many places where the word of God is preached and people pray for people, sometimes people only focus on the spiritual condition. I want to tell you, as servants of God, that the spiritual condition is just one aspect of you dealing with the problem. There are several things that must be dealt with. The spiritual condition is very important, it's very cardinal, and it can play a foundational role in dealing with all the other aspects of that spirit or that influence or that negative pattern. But you must be able to also identify what are the other things that are linked to the spiritual condition. All right? So already I said it is very important to know the history and the spiritual foundation of the house you come from. Like you now. So you see somebody may even be a believer. I mean a strong believer. But the kind of thing that is manifesting in their life is far contrary to anything that is mere Christianity. And so they wonder why is this person doing so with all the level of truth that they know. My brother think it's simple. My sister it's just simple. The reality is that there are things the person needs to know and understand that they are not understood. When you get saved, your salvation works in different sectors. There is a first aspect of your spirit being saved. Where you get connected to God, reconnected to God. Now you get born again and your spirit man gets reconnected to God. You become a child of God. Now Paul tells us in Romans chapter 12, beginning at verse 1. He said, I urge you, brethren, in view of God's mercy, one, you offer yourself as a living one, sacrifice. That means when you gave your life to Christ, the next thing you do is that you must be willing to surrender yourself to the Lord. Surrendering, not just in words, surrendering in every aspect. That means in your thinking faculty, in the way the things you do, in the way you carry out things, you must take it back to God for a re-evaluation where certain things can be deprogrammed and certain things can be reprogrammed. So when you get saved, there is a deprogramming of your life and then there has to be a reprogramming. There has to be a deorientation and a reorientation. So you find that people are saved, they're born again, they can pray, they can read the word of God, they can quote, but they are not being reorientated. The mentality they have before they came to Christ is the same mentality they are using. The thought pattern they have before they came to Christ is the same way they are taking. So yes, they are saved. They have the spirit of God in them, but their mind are not renewed. Their thought pattern is not renewed. Their character is not dealt with. Because when your mind is transformed, it's transitioned and affects your character you display. There is no way you can change a person's character without changing their mind. Because the Bible says, as a man thinking in his heart, so is he. So if a man is thinking wrong, a man will act wrong. So your, 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 your thought pattern determines your act pattern. If your, 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 your thought pattern is wrong, your acting pattern will be wrong. The way you react, the emotion you manifest will be no different from what is operating in your brain. So you will see somebody is 50 years old acting like a 5 or 10, or 10 year old boy. Why? Because they have not been a deprogram and a reprogram when it comes to the mindset. So my prayer for you today is that if you have not given yourself at that level, that the Lord will help you and you'll be able to surround yourself to him so that you can benefit the actual things that this kingdom provides. You see, this kingdom has a lot of goodies, a lot of wonderful things to be happening in your life as a child of God. Because Hebrews tells us that there are better things that are coming in salvation. I think Hebrews 5, 9 or so. He said there are better things. He said, brother, we are coming there are better things that are coming in salvation. That means when you come, get saved, you don't get saved when you go to heaven. Going to heaven is the, is, the, is the ultimate, but before you get to heaven, there are things you are supposed to accomplish here. The Bible said God raised us up to sit with him in Christ Jesus in heavenly places. Then in verse 10 it says, we are the workmanship of God created in Christ Jesus to do good works. So God intends that when you come to his knowledge, that you transition to the place where your life produces good results. Why? So that your light may shine before men, that they will see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Listen, people don't see your spirituality. They don't see how annoying you are. They don't know what they see. They see your good works. And so as a child of God, if you don't manifest good character by thinking straight, by doing things properly, 
by analyzing things the way they're supposed to be analyzed. Eventually, what will happen is that you will make a monk of the kingdom. You will be talking spirituality and people will be laughing at you. Because far they are concerned, you are using spirituality without your brain. And God does not want us at your mind. Your mind and your spirit works together. You cannot be using your spirit and forgetting to use your mind in the process of using your spirit. Your mind must work properly. It must work properly. Okay? So, there are positive things that are attached to your house. And there are negative things. And your duty as a child of God, or as a person, is to find out what are the positive things and what can I do to improve it. What are the negative things and what can I do to improve it? Now, Rosamir said, when you get to know your house, this provides an environment to understand how you fight and move through life. When you are able to do a proper analysis of your history and find out the positive things and the negative things, it helps you and teaches you how to fight and how to move through life. Because whether you know it or not, there is something you are supposed to fight. Some of them are spiritual, some of them are intellectual, some of them are natural, but you have to understand what you need to fight and how you need to fight. Two, you need to know how you need to move through life. What are the patterns you need to use? What are the systems that must be used to get certain results? Because some of you come from families, and some of us come from families, when the system introduced to us is a wrong system. And that system is what is producing the kind of results we are getting. And if we don't change the system, we cannot change the result. So you find somebody going and doing 40 days fast, 90 days fast, but still coming back and getting the same result. Not because they are not praying. It's because you come from praying and you use the very same old system you have always been using. You always been using. You got family. When you get into their environment, they don't respect the nucleus family. They don't appreciate the nucleus family. The nuclear family means nothing to them. I can tell you such a family could have a serious problem. There's nothing wrong with brothers and sisters loving one another. There's nothing wrong with brothers and sisters caring for one another. But it cannot be done at the expense of destroying the nuclear family. I know a family that are so close and so friendly to the point that they will destroy every marriage because of their closeness. Your closeness should strengthen marriage. All your people marriages should be strengthened by the closeness of one another. The closeness of one another should not destroy the marriage of one another. Because if your closeness is destroying the marriages of one another, it means the system in your family is wrong. It's an evil system. It's a controlling system. It's a witchcraft system. Because it's witchcraft that chooses to control people beyond their will. To make them do things that are detrimental to their life. Because it doesn't matter how much you as brothers and sisters you are close. Listen to me. You're not going to marry one another. You're not going to you're not going to get one another family. So to destroy one another marriages in a name that you are close and you are friendly is evil. Because the marriage that you are destroyed is God's system of replenishing the earth. God's system is not single parent, a woman living with her sons and children, no, or a man living with her two daughters, and that, that, is not, that is not God's system, God's system is not that way God's system is that you have the nuclear family, you have a father, you have a mother, then you have children, so the mother is giving the children, the mother the training, the father is giving the children, the father the training these two training enter the people and gave us a balanced break up today we have a lot of children with an unbalanced character because they did not have the actual kind of training for mother and father to have both sides of life. So you see your children, they are more feminine and they are less masculine. You can see some children, they are more masculine because they spend more time with daddy than with mommy. They didn't have mommy around, so daddy was the one that brought them up. So they have a lot of training. So the system in a given family can be destructed. It may be to the benefit of the family, but it can be destructed in enhancing the purposes of God, in advancing 
God's agenda in that given family. I'm not using marriage as one of them. There are several other things. Business. A business will never work because the family are close. Why? Because the family are close, they will do things to one another but, and because they are family, so they, nothing can be done. So I believe it's my brother thing, it's my sister thing, so I can treat it any kind of way. And I believe because the person loved me, the person won't do anything to me. So I, I, I don't know that the business that has been done can improve the family, but I use it to the detriment, to my own selfishness, and I break it down. So what am I doing? What am I doing as a person? I'm using a system, that's a, and this one, there's a spiritual component that has to do with grief, that has to do with recklessness, that has to do with other terrible character, but there's a mental component. There is a character component that if not worked on, if not discovered, that family goes nowhere. Those group of people make no progress at the end of the day. Why? Because the system they are using is wrong. And guess what? They will tell you that they are strong. They are brothers and sisters. Blood is thicker than water. No problem. But guess what? The system you are using is wrong. If you continue to use that kind of a system, that family is going nowhere. Now, what are you teaching? Are you teaching that I should be good? No, I'm not teaching you that the family. I'm telling you that, hey, there are things that need to be corrected. There are things that need to be confronted. There are things that need to be put in order. Anything in life that does not have, every freedom that does not have some level of restraint and some level of control is a form of bondage. It will cause destruction. In life, there must be some level of restraint. There cannot be something like extreme freedom, extreme this, extreme that. That's what you see. You guys are children, when they are coming, their parents, their children, their parents don't train them when to be quiet, when to talk. They don't have no regulator. They were not trained to have a regulator. So they walk into an environment, it's quiet, people are having meetings, things are going well, and they're disturbed. Why? Because growing up in life, the system they grew up in did not regulate them. They were not trained well. They were not developed well. You walk in the environment, everyone is quiet. You see that everyone's in it. And then you get there and start disturbing. It tells you that your upbringing was wrong. The system you came up in was wrong. And guess what? In that environment, you look odd. Everybody begins to wonder what's happening to you. Yes, you have a spiritual problem. You also have a physical, physical problem. You have a mental problem. Why? Because there were certain things that were not placed in you to regulate you, to let you know that when you enter and see it like this, you are supposed to flow according to this environment. When you walk in and see something, it's not, there are times you keep quiet not because you are weak. You keep quiet because it's the best thing to do. There are times you restrict from certain things not because you are weak, but because it is the best thing to do. But you see, if you don't grow up in the right system, you will not know when to withdraw, you will not know when to keep quiet, you will not know how to relate in a given environment. And sometimes it will be affecting your personal life, it will be affecting your friendship life, it will be affecting your career, it will be affecting everything you are attached to. And guess what? Whatever is happening to you, is a spirit from your house. If you check the character of the people that come from your house, that's how they behave. That's how they operate. Everywhere, it's not only you. Everywhere they find themselves, it's the same thing that's happened to them because they were not brought up in the right system. The system was wrong. My prayer for you today, that whatever system you grew up in, that have affected your life, that have created a problem and created an indictment, that nothing works perfectly around you, that by the grace of God, the Lord will deliver you today. That the Lord will break that spell and you will look inward and look at yourself. As I'm teaching you, do an evaluation of yourself. And you will discover that some of the binding and losing you don't want around and pray. You need to leave that alone. You need to do some thinking well. Which is also part of prayer. It's also part of spirituality. Because spirituality does not only affect just your spirit. It affects your soul. And it affects your body. So you need to also begin to go on inward work. And see how you can begin to renew your mind. And begin to reprogram your thought pattern. And really begin to reprogram the way you analyze and the way you perceive things. There are people who grew up in a system where when you are corrected, it seems like people don't like it, that's why they are correcting. Where they allow you to do anything, and it's a way of love to show you love, you are supposed to do anything, even stupid things, foolish things, you are supposed to do it. And it was a sign of love. It was to tell you that they love you. So they did not teach you that you don't do this and you don't do that, you don't do this other. So by the time someone is about to correct you, it becomes a problem. You begin to see the person that the person hates you. You begin to see as the person don't like you. You can see the person as the person is against you. And, and you see the person as the person is, you know, is rejecting, is resenting you. Whereas it's simply that you are doing the wrong thing and someone needs to tell you that this is not right. But the system you grew up in never taught you what is right and what is wrong. It never taught you 
how to be corrected, how to accept counsel, how to accept advice. Advice will always seem like maybe when the father tried to advise, the mother always said, Leave the children alone, you all to get the children a hard time. Or when the mother tried to advise, the father came in and made it to appear, the mother they didn't like the children. That was the she was at doing something the way she was doing it. And because they grew up in that system, that system caused a civil damage for their thinking pattern and their life pattern. So every time they get into an environment, maybe trying to get out of it, somebody wants to try to reprimand them. They see that person as a person not liking them. They see as the person hating them. They see as the person not wanting, you know, to, to, to relate to them. Whereas the person just love them and believe that they are getting out of course and it will cause some problem for them and the person has decided to correct some issues. And so it's important for us to be delivered from the spirit of our house. And yesterday as I was talking, now we will look at in, in, in Gideon's situation, in Gideon's situation, Gideon is from the nation of Israel. His father is one of those leaders in Israel in the days of the judges. Though Jehovah had brought him to the promised land, they have heard all his acts, they have seen his good works, but he was part of a generation that got disconnected from God. And they chose to get involved in idol worship, Get involved in demonic activities and begin consulting other gods other than the Almighty God. And because of what they did, it led to God also staying away from them. He could not come into their midst because they had turned from me and turned to other gods. They had turned to every other form of spirituality outside God. And that goes for anybody listening to me today. Today, if you are consulting any other spirituality outside God, listen to me. You are bringing your similar indictment, you are bringing your family, you are bringing your generation. And some of you come from backgrounds like that, where all the generations that are before you and before you know is to consult spirituality outside God. Now, we cannot hold the 100% responsible because some of them, that's what they knew, that's what they grew up in, that's what they were exposed to. But you in your generation that have been exposed to the Word of God, have been exposed to truth, have been exposed to the power of God, has been exposed to the anointing, in your season and time, revival has broken from anywhere. Unfortunately for many of you, the only aspect of, of church and spirituality and positive things you see are the negative things. Those who are making mistakes. So most of you who don't want to work with God, you only try to find people who are doing wrong things in the church and in the church background. And you use it as an alibi to cast a blanket over everybody. And, and, and I sort of ask the question, because people steal in the bank, so the bank is not a good place to go. Because there are lawyers who are not correct, so it means that every lawyer is not a good person. You know, sometimes I want some of you who go to school. Whether you better went to school, I'm sorry, but where went to school? Because sometimes your analysis is so, it's so, it's so vague. It, 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 like you live in, you, you, you live in utopia. You live in another planet. You got all around us all kind of vices. People go to school, learn some other go and sell it and get a account because you certified public accountant and you put them all a company and they steal. Does that mean everyone that has a CPA is a rogue? You, you need to, you, you, some of you need to reinvent it. We need to send some of you back to school to go and learn. So you come to a church environment, you meet a minister, one minister that does one thing that is not correct, then you blanket everybody, you say, everybody so and so so, and then the rest of the other thing. That is not sound judgment. On a typical analysis when it comes to evaluation and making, how you call it, or, 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 or. when you are finding a, a something, you do it based on majority. You don't do it based on minority. And listen to me today in the body of Christ, there are so many good, great, and wonderful servants of God that go out called, that are doing well, that are leading, that are building capacity. You look around them, they are building, they are contributing, they are raising men and women that are affecting society positively. Some of the people that even some of you benefit from were developed by these servants of God. They were taught, they were trained, their character, the kind of a thing they exhibit on the outside is based on what they have been taught by these people. But unfortunately for some of you, you have become depraved in your thinking and you already hate God. You don't like the things of God. So you try to find the least of everything to want to put a blanket on those who walk with the Lord. You have to be careful. Because sometimes when you're doing this thing and you think you're getting away with it, let me God takes the time to handle things, but when he gets ready to handle things, you feel sorry for people. In my short life I've laid, I've seen God deal with people. And when God is dealing with people, Sometimes you who are his child, you feel bad. And sometimes tell people sometimes you want to be like you're more good than God. But it tells you that God gives people time to come to their senses. 
So all of you that are losing your senses and you just open your mouth and you just talk anything and you don't even know what you're doing, you just get an embodied thing because automatically God has blessed you with one thing or the other, money, power, and fame, and you just get it and everybody better put yourself in order because, listen to me, God deals with issues. He, he monitors things. He watches things. Even evil you do, and you may be thinking you're succeeding in it, God watches it. And at the fullness of time, he deals with it. But at the time he's dealing with it, people don't think. You don't remember the evil you've done. You don't remember the, the, the situation you created that provoked that. So my advice to many of you is that you put yourself in order. Some of you are, you are not even careful. You are, you are so brave. The people in the angels are afraid to say, you brave to say. And a lot of you indict yourself and end yourself. And by the, before you make up your mind, things begin to just get out of order and break down around your life. And that's the time you want to come to yourself and start saying, oh, someone is attacking you. Someone, somebody, nobody is attacking you. You just walk the wrong road, say the wrong thing, just pick on the wrong person. You just choose the wrong fight. In life, you got to be wise to know what kind of battle to pick up. There are certain battles you don't dream of. You don't even make, you don't dream of a ten thing to do. Some years ago, I was close to someone. And this person was had a relationship with someone who was tough, you know, in a politics and other things. And the person was counting on trying going after somebody. So I called the person. I told him, I said, you close to this person, tell them the fight they are about to go into, they will lose it. He said, no, but the person has the backing. I said, I said, tell the person they will lose it. He said, why? I said, you're fighting the wrong person. It's a wrong war. Every war, you got to be able to evaluate. Jesus said, anyone intended to go to war, you got to sit down and calculate what it will cost you. What it will cost you. And the reason why it will, why it will cost you is because you got to find out who are you going to fight. What is the capacity? Don't, 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 don't live in, 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 in self-deception. It's, and that's why people have destroyed themselves because you, 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 you are, you are be not deceived. Not I mean anything you are attempting. You must do a thorough evaluation of people. Don't live in utopia. Don't, don't put a thought in your mind, illusion in your mind that, 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 that will destroy you. You need to evaluate well and analyze. Am I, do I have the capacity for this? Because if you don't have the capacity and you are tempted, you destroy yourself. And even God cannot help you. So I told the person, I said, tell them to stop because the war they are started, they won't win. I said, there are several reasons. One, one, the person they're trying to destroy, that person made them. And the Bible says in Proverbs, do not reward good with evil because evil will not depart from your house. That's just a more God principle. When people do you good, you don't reward them with evil. If you attempt to reward them with evil, God said, don't need to fight you. God don't need to fight you. The heavens, the earth, the bodies will fight you. Why? Because you have stepped out of the principles of life. In the principle of life, when people do you good, you pay them back with good. You don't pay them back with evil. Because when you give back evil to someone that has done you good, evil does not depart from you. So, the spiritual condition is important. The things you do are important. And my prayer for you today is that you will make the right decisions. So that indeed, you can be delivered from the spirit of the house. So yesterday I was talking about the mentality. I said the way people think. In certain family, people think wrongly. They don't think properly. They don't think okay. And such thinking pattern affects them. It indicts them. It hinders them. It hinders them in the area of their career. They are not able to achieve anything in their career because of the way they think. It hinders them in relationship. Relationships never work because of the way they think. It hinders them in everyday interaction with people. Every now they are at war, they are conflict with people. Why? Because of the way they think, their mentality. Their mentality is producing wrong action, and those actions are creating problems for them. The next thing I want to talk about today is the spiritual condition. What is the spiritual condition? For Gideon, the spiritual condition was his forefathers, his fathers had turned to a wrong God. They had left Jehovah. And they are turned to idols, they are turned to demonic forces, they are turned to satanic altars, and that is what they were submitting their life to. And these altars that they have gone to 
could not help them like Jehovah was helping them. Because the inheritance they had, what they had received, what they had gotten, did not come from those demonic altars. So now I feel sorry for people. They will, they will use demonic power to get a job, to get an elevation, to get a promotion. By the time they get there, then somebody is telling them to protect themselves, protect something that they did not have to do certain things to get. I wonder what's wrong with you. You didn't consult a dinner doctor. You didn't go to a charm. You didn't do anything. You came into a place if you didn't expect. Then you get there, then you go to demonic power to protect you. Is something wrong with you? What are you trying to do? You are trying to destroy what God has given you. You are bringing a negative spirit into a positive atmosphere. And that's why a lot of you are having shocks. You have to talk about these kind of situations. Some of us come with this kind of negative background. We do nothing about the negative background. And then we want to bring in the positive. You want to hold demonic power and hold God at the same time. Guess what? That's a shock. That's putting negative and positive wire together. There will be a shock in your life. No one of my life you are receiving shocks. A bad be bad, serve you. God be God, serve God. You don't mix it. And today that's the world we live in. A lot of people are fake. And even this Corona that I review, fake and real. Fake and real. Fake and real. Fake Christians and real Christians. They are revealed. It. You can hear it from their utterance. You can hear it from their behavior. You can hear it from the way they react towards the thing. They have been part of the, the system, but they have been against the system. So Corona only exposed them. Listen to me. In any given system, loyalty is desired. Even if you want to correct, you correct from inside. You don't correct from outside. That means you are not you, you are you are having problem in, in, in claiming the career of your life. You are not. You cannot be part of a system and correct the system while you are in the system. From outside, you are standing outside attacking the system. It doesn't work. That's a sign of madness. In the corporate setting, it doesn't work. There's something called damage control. That means you probably represent the system outside. You go inside and you make the correction on the inside. Unfortunately, I'm not talking about a system where they are sick offense and people are not interested in excellence. They are not interested in improving. That's what I'm talking about. In any good system, the people should be open to correction. They should be open to improvement. They should be open to, uh, to making things better. But those things are not done from the outside. They are done from on the inside. So many of you who call yourself Christian, you call yourself different, different things, and you are the one that attack the bad Christ. Listen to me about a real Christian. Because a real Christian does not attack the bad Christ from outside. If you want to correct a system, you correct it from inside. Maybe you have a relationship with ministers of the gospel, with different people in Tinder. You prefer to come and jump on Facebook to attack. You think when you attack a person, what made them to change? No. What are you doing? If you know the person have a problem, go to them, meet them one on one, and engage them. It's, a, it's cowardice. It's being cowardice for you to, to, to stay fire and throw rock. You want to correct a thing? Confront the issue. Meet the person one on one. It is your duty. The Bible said, if, if a brother is taken in a, in, a in a fall, you who are more spiritual should restore him in the spirit of love. Not in the spirit of time, not in the spirit of anger. Most of you are saying to the politicians. You want to be a, become a politician, you want to be a child of God, be a child of God. The real character of a child of God is to correct people in the spirit of love. Not to prove that you are better than them. That's not the mindset. That's not the spirit. That's not the character of a real child of God. So you see, when the system is wrong and you grow up in the wrong system, it affects your orientation. It affects the way you behave. It affects the things you do. So they sought another God. And because they sought another God, it put the whole generation in bondage. The inheritance they have received, they could not maintain it. They became slaves in their own inheritance. Why? Because the one who are giving them the inheritance, they are driven the person away. They are introduced a new system into their lives that could not sustain what they have. Listen to me. Every inheritance and everything you have in this world is not permanent. The permanent, the, that thing being permanent is based on the condition you create around your life. If you create the wrong condition around your life, today you can have it. And in a few years when you come, it won't be with you, it will be with somebody else. Because God is a God who specializes in taking things from one person and giving it to another person if you are not handling it well. That's why in Ecclesiastes 2 26, it said to a man who pleases God, he gave him wisdom and knowledge. And it says to the one who, uh, who, to the wicked, to the one who disobeyed God, God gave him the task of gathering and storing so that he, God, would turn it over to the man who pleases him. So if you, if you know better, you better learn how to please God and stop behaving like you can do anything and get away. Because there comes a time 
when God decides to put this in check. Listen to me. God may allow us out of our way for a period, but there are always a time where accountability comes in, where other things take place, where God has to come and do record check. And at that point in time, it's after those appraisers, record check, that elevations are done, different changes and transformation takes place in our life as children of God. So I want to encourage us today. The spiritual condition of a family is important. There are some families, their spiritual condition is terrible. It's rooted in evil. It's rooted in bloodshed. It's rooted in respect. It's rooted, it's rooted in Eastern justice. Taking advantage of the poor. You have had generation of people who are there used to taking advantage of other people. And those indictments, as the people release curse and they release divinity, those indictments come upon the generation. If you grow up and walk in the same pattern and want to get a different result, brother and sister, you are wasting your time. It's not going to work. You must change that particular thing. That condition must be changed. Because by the actions of the previous generation, cause, secret cause, different thing. Roll on foundation. Involving high demonic rituals to sustain power, money, whatever. To do anything to make it in life. And that's the kind of a backwards we come from. Listen to me. If you are a child going to have such a root, you got to revisit it. And see what you can do to set this pattern in order. And as you walk with God, begin to do things positively in a different direction to be able to avert the manipulation of such foundation that will lead The spirit of your house can determine your progress or can determine your setback or can determine whether you excel or you don't excel. Don't take it lightly. Tomorrow, as you come, we will continue. And we will go deeper. We will go deeper. Into spiritual conditions. I will spend a lot of time talking about spiritual conditions tomorrow. But I want to encourage you today. God wants you to be free from any negative spirit of your house. God wants to deliver you from any negative spirit of your house. And restore you and help you. And make sure that you fulfill his purpose for your life. I know you this time I like that. I know you may be thinking that I need. It's time to be on break. No. This is time to get closer to God. This is the time to build an intimate relationship. This is time to reevaluate a lot of things. Because in the next few days, we're going back to, to normal life and moving up and down. This period is part of our life. We can't put our life on pause because of COVID-19. But we can have a sober reflection. Three weeks of study emergency, two weeks of steady home should be a time of revisiting a lot of things, evaluating a lot of things, considering our ways, revisiting our decision, our taking pattern, and see how we can reorientate ourselves and correct a lot of things, revisit some spiritual foundations, and see how we can set some things right. So at the end of the day, the blessings God has for us and the things we want to accomplish can be fulfilled. I see the purpose of God for your life being fulfilled. I believe it is possible. And I stand in agreement with you. And I trust that God will be good to you. And God will cause his purpose for you to be fulfilled. This morning I'd like you to lift your hands wherever you are. I'd like us to pray. I'd like us to pray this morning. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you this morning. And I bless you for being in your presence. I honor you, Lord, today. And I worship you. I've heard your word. And I believe your word. Today. Wherever I have failed you. I seek your mercy. And I seek your forgiveness. I ask you to cleanse me. I ask you to wash me. And I ask you to sanctify me. In the name of Jesus. Thank you for showing yourself faithful. On my behalf. In Jesus mighty name. Today. By the blood of Jesus, I break every link with the spirit of my house. Every negative spirit. Spirit of oppression. Spirit of setback. Spirit of witchcraft. Spirit of, 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 of suppression. Spirit of manipulation. Every wrong spirit that have worked with and against me and my household. I break my link with you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Every stronghold that has been implanted in our minds and our spirits 
that I fetch our ticket pattern, that I fetch our life pattern. I destroy today in the name of Jesus. I set my spirit, soul, and body loose in the name of Jesus Christ. I receive freedom. I receive liberty to break forth and fulfill God's plan for my life. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Today as I stand before your altar, oh God, I pray for holiness. I pray for a breaking form. I pray for establishment. I pray for elevation. I pray for a revival. I pray for a renewal. And I thank you for doing a new thing in my life. And Lord, I decree today, I will never be the same again. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. And amen. Father, I want to thank you for that brother and that sister and that family. For that individual, wherever they are watching from. I pray for them today. You said by a prophet you brought Israel out of Egypt. By a prophet they were preserved. Today by your anointing and by your power. I break the power of evil over their life. Whatever spirit, whatever influence, whatever yoke, whatever mentality. That have been entrenched. That have served as a, 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 a legal ground to influence, control and manipulate their life. I destroy today by the blood of Jesus. I set their spirit, soul, body loose in the name of Jesus Christ. It is written, whatever my father has not planted shall be uprooted. And so today I uproot every planting of darkness surrounding their lives in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for liberty from the crown of their head to the sole of their feet. I pray for restoration. I pray for healing. I pray for deliverance. I pray, oh God, for your visitation. I pray for the outpouring of your fresh of the glory. And I thank you for a revival breaking forth in their life and in their family. That a new day will dawn and your glory will be revealed and you will show yourself strong. I thank you and I bless you, Lord, for manifesting your grace. Take the praise today. Let your name be honored. Let your name be adored. I bless and worship you. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. And amen. I want to let you know that tomorrow we are continuing. I'm glad that there's only we don't teach in this direction. So tomorrow we'll come, we'll go deep into spiritual conditions. And when we deal with a lot of issues, I will, tell, I will touch a lot of issues when we deal with spiritual conditions. I'd like you to invite someone and tell them to be a part of whatever teaching that you are following and you are, you are receiving. Also, I want you to go to our YouTube channel and I want you to, to, to subscribe. Samuel Collier, or Samuel Collier Jr. You know, for every time we upload, you will receive uh, a notification. You have to, so you see a notification, the, 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 the uh, video will go to you. So we'd like to encourage you to take advantage of it. Please go there, and whoever you are getting to, you are invited, let them go to our YouTube page and subscribe. We encourage you to do that. And I know the Lord is going to bless you. Last of all, I shared with you yesterday that we want to see how we can work out to us today. But it's going to be a bit cost intensive. So all of you who are interested in uh, partnering with us so that we are able to do that, to do both morning and evening broadcast since we are in the lockdown, we encourage you to get to us. You get to us in our messenger page. Uh, that is uh, Simon College Jr. or you can go to our WhatsApp. That is uh, 0770551286. 0770551286. Get to us and talk to us and you can rest assured we'll go there. We want to really do that. For the remaining about 11 to 12 to 11, 11 to one more days that are remaining. And we know the Lord is going to bless you. We want to encourage you. We know we've been blessed this uh, uh, morning. And we trust that in the, uh, the Lord will minister and grant you your heart desire. Tomorrow we are continuing in the spirit, delivering from the spirit of my house. And we know that you have been blessed. And as we go deeper, we know that. God will give us mighty testimony and great results. Open your spirit, open your heart, and let the Lord bless you as we look forward to a glorious time. Uh, we'd like to just take some short music and we'll be closing. But until we meet tomorrow, we want to encourage you today. Uh, we we'll encourage you. We'd like uh, Samir Shukurani. To close us, is a uh, open the floodgates in French. Yeah, God bless you. Let the Lord open the floodgates and flood your life and bring you in the wholeness. Minister to you.
Fais tomber. Fais tomber. T'as vu. Qui l'a envoyé de ma vie. Merci. Nous sommes dans ta présence. Fais tomber. Fais tomber. Oh. T'as vu. Qui l'a envoyé de ma vie. Ta plus qui l'envoie ce mari. Nous sommes dans ta présence. Fais jamais. Oh, ta plus qui l'envoie ce mari. Ouvre tes secrets. Thank you.